Here's what I want you to remember tonight. If big business and government are involved together, take nothing at face value. Now, let me take a closer look. I want to present a theory to you today. Facebook, I believe, was overvalued intentionally for two different reasons. And, and I'm not saying it's all collusion. I'm just saying there, there's competing reasons to do this. One of the reasons is greed. The other is a desire to control. Facebook is far more valuable than money. Control. Remember, um, the left needs to control the media. What is it that has really been destroying the left? The Tea Party, they never saw that coming. That's grassroots organization. What is changing the world? What is causing revolutions? People being able to connect on places like Facebook. It is a mighty powerful weapon. And if you are the one in power, man, you don't want that just out there. There are 900 million people all over the globe that are currently on Facebook. 51% of all Americans use Facebook. That's incredible. 51% of Americans don't do anything. 51% of Americans don't vote. The size and scope and reach of Facebook is the kind of thing that is right out of the fantasy dream of Cass Sunstein. Now, If Facebook happens to have trouble, and if Facebook starts to go down, who could possibly be there to step in and save the day? Is it possible that something this important to world communication could go down? Why would you go after radio, talk radio? Why would you go after television? They're soon going to be phased out. I mean, why do you think I'm here? This is the space that needs to be dominated. This is the future space. I mean, going after radio and television at this point is kind of like going after Ma Bell. But if Facebook will, goes down, I mean, if you had some way where you could, you could work your way in because you had to save them just like they did with the banks... Remember, they forced the banks to take the bailout money so they could control them. We don't have a choice. You're just too big to fail. Bullcrap. It is part of the plan. Do you remember what Barack Obama did when he first got into office? One of the first things he did is he had the Library of Congress start collecting and archiving the works of Twitter and other social media like Facebook in order to preserve the universal human body of knowledge. Oh, really? Really? That's what you were doing? Really? Reading the tweets and the Facebook posts of people that I went to high school with, that's the, that's the body of human knowledge? No, no. That's sinister. That's the beginning of a power grab. But why go through all that trouble of recording it when you can just control all of it? You don't have to worry about any of those greedy CEOs when you force the banks to take the bailouts. The banks will do what you want. You can cap CEO pay if you want. You just, you just control them. You can see who gets loans and who doesn't. You don't have to worry about enforcing emission standards or even arguing about it when you tell the companies which cars to build. I know this is a really outrageous charge to make, but I want you to look at the timelines and the facts. We talked about Facebook. It's a company that didn't even have a way to make money when it started. CEO Mark Zuckerberg still defines, to this day, the company's goal as this. This all seems like a big deal. Going public is an important milestone in our history. But here's the thing. Our mission isn't to be a public company. Our mission is to make the world more open and connected. In the past eight years, all of you out there have built the largest community in the history of the world. Hello. 
I want to make the world more open and connected. First of all, if you're going to go public, you, part of that goal, part of that goal should be, you know, making some money. All right? That should be part of the goal. But more importantly, do you hear? You just built the largest community in the world. That's history. Now, they don't have a way to make money yet. We're told to believe it's worth three times more than the Disney empire and craft. Everyone's in love, including President Obama. He and Zuckerberg sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. They held fundraisers and functions, prominently promoting Facebook, and even held a town hall together. February 17, 2011, Zuckerberg attends Obama's Tech Titan dinner party. March 10th, the White House hosted a special Facebook Live session on bullying prevention. April 20th, Obama hosts another Facebook, a town hall at the Facebook offices in California. They're buddies. Obama told Zuck, oh, take off your jacket and get comfortable. Zuckerberg said, hey, I'm cool. And in fact, I'm cool with even paying higher taxes. <laughs> September 11th, the White House announced that Facebook pledged $200,000 in research grants dedicated to cyberbullying prevention. Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg now is a member of the President's Council on Jobs and Competitiveness. Here she is meeting with the President uh, and C uh, GE CEO Jeff Immal. Ow. Oh, another company that's in the bag for the White House. Then on September 25, 2011, she hosted a fundraiser for Obama at her home in California. $35,000 of plate and Lady Gaga was there. It was the dish it rocked. Then October 19th of last year, the White House posted support from business leaders for its Commerce Secretary nominee, including comments from Facebook COO. March 30th, 2012, White House launched a Facebook timeline highlighting 200 years of history and celebrating previous presidents. So this is an ongoing, strong makeout session. The popular president and the darling upstart company with a young, famous billionaire CEO who just wants to spread the wealth. So now comes the time to set the IPO. We're going to go public. Wall Street will do it. And everyone wanted a crack at this. This is obviously a highly sought after job. I mean, whatever bank got this, the bank stood to gain 100 to 200 million dollars. When it's all said and done, somebody made a lot of money. Depending on the opening value, depending on the opening value. So whoever gets it, if you're going to be the bank that represents this IPO, man, you want that share price to be pretty darn high. Well, many pitched for the gig, banks from all over. But out of all of the possible banks out there, here are the lucky winners. Morgan Stanley, which is weird because Morgan Stanley was the lead underwriter and uh, two other banks also played large roles in this and it was J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Now, you hear those and you're like, those sound pretty familiar, and they should. Morgan Stanley was the lead consultant on Fannie and Freddie bailouts. So he knows the government quite well. They also set the IPO for General Motors. Whoa. J.P. Morgan, that's Obama's favorite bank. Every other bank is evil and reckless and greedy, but his pal Jamie Dimon, oh, he's really competent and trustworthy. Except, of course, which Obama won't point out when they lose over $2 billion in risky bets. But So all, out of all of the banks, Obama's most trusted bank gets the gig. Now, it's not just the same bank that got, you know, the, the gig, that the same bank that did the IPO for GM. It's actually the same exact people, the same analyst in the same bank. Now, in the run-up to the release of the IPO value, the banks, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, and Sachs, all agree, $38. $38, wouldn't you agree? Oh, I agree, Bill. How about you, Bob? Oh, yeah, $38. That's the number. That would put Facebook at just over $100 billion and make Mark Zuckerberg pretty, pretty much, you know, holding so much that he, he would say, I, 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 I wouldn't even miss that tax dollar. And people were ready to buy in. Ooh, demand for Facebook shares extreme, said one person familiar with the deal, saying more than 1,000 institutional investors had placed their orders already. 
the investors roadshow full swing touting the stock to all prospective buyers remember the banks all three partners need to have that share price up there it was big $38 but then something changed something odd happened Facebook filed its revenue forecast with the SEC this is just a few days ago May 9th now keep keep in mind just before this thing goes out they file with the SEC now the underwriter wants to paint as rosy of a picture as possible within the legal guidelines well according to Business Insider the information in the SEC filing was extremely vague you really had to read between the lines to see any kind of revenue drop in the forecast yet Morgan Stanley JP Morgan and Goldman all came out and said you know what we've looked at this thing we're concerned they revised their revenues revenue estimates down right before the launch of the IPO now this is an extremely rare move one that most definitely impacted the opening drop-off which I find most interesting because the financial experts say that given the information in the SEC filing it's highly unlikely that all three banks would independently cut their estimates and say, oh, I, I caught that. Oh, I didn't even know you caught that, too. Oh, you caught that, too. All three of you did. Inside experts say they believe someone told them to cut it or at least said, Psst, guess what's coming? Hmm. That's what this new lawsuit is all about now. They say the revised expectations were not made widely known to people, thus screwing the little guy. $2.5 billion has been lost. So far, Facebook dropped 18% in its first two days. Morgan Stanley admits it did give special guidance about Facebook's problems to its best clients, its biggest clients, but the smaller investors, eh, we kept them largely in the dark. But they claim... What? What? We didn't violate any security laws in doing so. Oh. Oh, well, that makes me a fan of capitalism. Oh, that makes me a huge fan of Wall Street and banks. Mm. That doesn't piss me off at all. Nope. If, if, if I lose my money because where I have my 401k, you know, some of that money on my pension that was invested in this new IPO, oh, I don't, I'm, uh -uh. I'm, I'm cool with that. I guess... Mark Zuckerberg didn't feel the need to put this information in his status update. So now we come to the messy part. Within a, mour, a matter of hours, Facebook went from hero to zero, from saint to goat. It went from a no-brainer to a colossal embarrassment. Hmm. And this is what bothered me on Friday and especially on Monday morning something's wrong here because now everybody hates them what about that solid friendship between Zuck and Obama huh he stands up for his friends doesn't he remember the insider report that you know started the uh, downward turn this was on May 9th well on May 11th Obama's tone on Facebook starts to change he said quote I'm reminded I just came from Seattle and I told a room full of folks some of whom work for Microsoft Bill Gates is a genius Steve Jobs is a genius. Mark Zuckerberg, amazing what they've accomplished. But the internet doesn't exist unless all of us together make an investment in something called DARPA. That helped develop the internet. That was common enterprise that created this platform for success for everybody. Oh, man, if we just had a, if we just had like a common community that the government could control. On May 15th, the Wall Street Journal reported that General Motors planned to stop advertising with Facebook after deciding that paid ads on the site really don't impact people. Wait a minute. Hold it just a second. <laughs> Hang on. They file with the SEC. Everybody's crazy. File with the SEC. And then a couple of days later, the president says, I'm not really sure. And then General Motors, otherwise known as Government Motors, comes out and says, I I'm not really sure. We've got to cancel our advertising because I don't think that's going to work. Excuse me? The move by General Motors fueled questions about whether Facebook's business prospects could even support its valuation. This week it was reported that the SEC, the Senate, and the House are now investigating the IPO underwriting. Huh. Mm, that's going to go well, isn't it? 
Facebook has now been attacked in the press for having, quote, an all-white board. So now the left is calling the darling racist, of course. Chuck Schumer said he'd go after Facebook executives that plan to leave the country, as Chuck said, for defriending the United States. Oh, <laughs> it's Facebook humor. The Economist, Business Week, and others suddenly were lining up against Facebook. Warning, warning now, didn't hear this three days ago, warning if this stock craters, if revenues don't grow, and I'm quoting, 41% annually for the next five years, it could be a real problem. I'm sorry, I'm a small businessman. Would anyone in their right mind say, yep, my business is going to grow 41% in the next five years? Yep, five years in a row, 41% every year. I'm comfortable with that. I don't think so. Not likely to happen. Now, today, the most dire warnings are saying this could be a black swan. No, sure, you'll see white swans, but a black swan oh, happens rarely, and this could collapse the global economy. America. Common sense. I am not a financial guy by any stretch of the imagination, but I do have common sense. Where there's smoke, there's fire. 900 million people on Facebook. 51% of Americans are there. The, fir the world's first global community. Facebook, behind global revolutions, the power of this platform is worth far more than any stock price. Do you think there's anybody in the government that would want to control this platform? Or at least get enough leverage on them to be able to squeeze its neck when it needs to? On top of that, do you think there's a chance that there's a ton of greedy capitalists who just want their money and don't give a flying crap? They just want their cash. Capitalism does not work unless it's used by a self-regulated and moral, decent people. But the same can be said for our government. George Washington said, the government is like a fire. If you control it, it's a benefit. If it controls you, it will burn everything down. We look to... Our government is a friend, not what it truly is, a fire. And when they collude business and government, oh, there's trouble. Remember today, if big business and government is involved together, take nothing at face value.